I think uh, after the industrial revolution, the biggest revolution to happen to humankind was the invention of mobile phones, right? Because it gave awkward people like me the tool to talk to real life female type human beings, you know? <laughs> so, before the invention of mobile phones, he basically had two methods to fall in love with a person, okay? There was this futuristic tool, uh, it was called Flames. I don't know, how many of you know Flames? Great, that's, that's the old people in the audience. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know Flames, okay, it's, it's very futuristic, I'll tell you how it works. You don't even have to talk to the girl, okay? You have to sit in the back bitch, okay? You have to write Flames and you play this game and every letter will tell you what your relationship with that girl is going to be in the future, okay? So if it's F, it's friendship, yeah? L, then you'll fall in love, yeah? A was attraction, yeah. M was direct player, marriage, direct, okay. So M was marriage, E was enemy, yeah. And S was, sorry, go ahead. S was what? Sex, who said sex? <laughs> this is a family friendly show, S was sister, okay. So S was supposed to be sister. And uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that's how flames worked, right? Now it's a great tool. That was one of the ways to determine your future with a girl. <laughs> if that didn't happen, you could pick up your landline phone, yeah, or somebody would call you on your landline phone and you could talk to her. Now the problem with landline phones are, there are two landline phones in every house, okay? One is for talking, one is for spying, okay? Either your mom picks it up, or your brother picks it up. I have a younger brother, which translates into I have, a, I have an annoying brother, okay? So my annoying brother would pick up the second line, <clears throat> and he wouldn't do much, okay? I'd be on the line and I'd be having a great conversation. He would pick up the call and he would just do this. He would do <sighs> Those people never call me again, I don't know why. So unfortunately, these were the only two methods and suddenly I had this new tool, right? I could talk to someone in the comforts of my room, snuggled into a pillow and I could tell them exactly how I feel and they couldn't see the sweat beads on my forehead. So it was great, right? So it's not a surprise that when I first found a girlfriend, I found it through a screen. Now it was, honestly it was quite a coincidence because all that happened was we were having a random conversation and I popped this question saying, does this mean we are boyfriend girlfriend now? And she said, yes. And I said, okay, you know, and suddenly we were dating, right? Now, small catch, she was in the other class. I had never talked to her in real life, right? So I was still awkward to talk to her in real life. So now suddenly we are walking in the school corridor, she's coming from here, I'm coming from here. We give each other the boyfriend-girlfriend appreciation nod and we walk right past each other. Right? Because I don't have the guts to talk to her. For two months, this was the reality of my life. Okay, two months later, I remember asking her saying, Hey, do you by any chance think this is not working out? Should we break up or something? And she's like, yes. And I said, okay. And that was, that was literally my first breakup. Now I had learned, right? I was experienced in this industry now. So I figured that next time I try to talk to someone, I should also have talked to them beforehand in real life, right? So the second time I found a girlfriend, I made sure she was from the same class. We already had talked to each other and, and it clicked, okay? It just, it just really clicked. Uh, we, were, we were great together. We would have great conversations. I still, I still remember our first date clearly in my head. It was very romantic, right out of a movie. Uh, we took an auto and uh, <laughs> went to the nearest pizza joint and split a medium pizza because garibi and uh, then we split a chocolate cake because more garibi and uh, then we took an auto back and this is i'm sorry this gets a little raunchy over here uh, we were sitting in the auto and i got my first piece of action uh, i remember we held hands for 15 minutes <laughs> it was guys it was it is great it was very raunchy i remember like my hands are here, then it all the way just like went to there <laughs> and she moved her hands, then we finally held hands and it was, it was so beautiful, I literally wrote poetry about it. There was a hundred text messages limit that was there back then. So you could only write so much poetry but whatever I could, I would write poetry about it. It was all great until my father found my phone uh, and read all the messages and then I talked to him about privacy and he gave me one chamat. So, uh, but it was great, right? It was, it was through a screen that I found this person and now we were in love and it was beautiful. And at 16, I felt like I had already found my soulmate, you know, and that right there was my happily ever after. 
things changed though, and I sort of moved to college, and uh, I went from being in a relationship to being in a long distance relationship. Uh, text messages were out of fashion now. There was this new thing called WhatsApp that everybody had gotten onto. So we would talk on WhatsApp. And in between all the texting and back and forth, I think somewhere I lost my value for words. You know, so now I would just throw it around like a privileged rich brat would throw around money. You know, and sometimes I was so careless that I would end up sending text messages to the wrong people. Right? There was this time when I was fighting with my girlfriend then, and uh, don't imagine sophisticated hurry. Okay. Imagine like 17 year old emo hurry. So messages look something like, I think you woke up with the sole intention of making my heart bleed and my tears are like raindrops and now I'll listen to Nickelback songs, you know. So very, very cringy and emo, right? So, so that's, what was, uh, that's what the text message looked like. And instead of sending it to my girlfriend, I sent it on my college debating society WhatsApp group. <laughs> yeah. One day, you know. <laughs> Screens Award taught me how to fall in love. It taught me my ability to love. And Screens Award taught me my ability to form words into poetry and make someone feel special. But Screens are also what I used to cheat on my girlfriend for the first time. It started with a few texts, then it led into pictures, then it led into someone coming over. And sooner than later, the guilt sort of caught up with me and uh, we broke up. And like every person who breaks up because of their fault, I promised myself that I'll, I'll never fall in love again. And like every person who makes that promise, I fell in love again. <laughs> this time I was much older though, this time I was much more mature. So I thought everything would be different, right? We would talk a lot more in real life. Uh, we would go to Sunday brunches and drink wine maybe, right? We've been dating for, we actually completed two years yesterday. Uh, and uh, thank you. And honestly, nothing is really different. You know, we still sit in bed, eat a pizza and spread a cake. And this whole thing about growing up, I don't think really worked out. But I think, I think that's what love is maybe about, you know? It's about finding a best friend and becoming 16 all over again. It's probably about eating pizzas and going on stupid dates and saying corny things and holding hands and high-fiving each other when you're in public to seem cooler. Uh, Maybe love isn't about growing up. Maybe things don't have to be all that different, you know, or you don't have to be all that different. I think all we need maybe is little fleeting moments that just let us know that we are a little bit better than what we were yesterday. And I get those fleeting moments, you know. Sometimes there are these Sundays where we are sitting at home and my girlfriend for some reason loves the sunlight. So we're sitting at home on a sofa and our heads are leaned against the window and there's always a white curtain pulled over us and our heads are tilted and we're looking at each other. And I keep wondering, saying, how the hell am I so lucky to feel this feeling all over again when I promised myself that I'd never be 16 again and fall in love? You know, in that moment, I really don't know where my phone is. I don't know what work calls I'm missing. I honestly have no care in the world. And when I look at her and I sit over there, I have this urge to write. And in that urge to write, I think I find my lost love for words. And in that moment, I think I find my lost ability to fall in love all over again. Only this time, there are no screens attached. Thank you. To like, subscribe and follow us, just press some of these buttons. I don't know why people keep pointing. You are uh, educated and you can read. So just read it and do the needful. Please, we're a startup, we need your love.